High stakes hockey, high school hockey tonight at the deck where Duluth East met Duluth Denfeld in the capper of a doubleheader. At stake for the Greyhounds, a share of the Lake Superior Conference title, while a win for the Hunters meant new life in the LSC race. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this game. In the second period, score tied at one. Great centering pass by Troy Skorich. He was on his knees to Greg Christensen, who backhands at home 2-1 Hunters. Later, the Hunters take a two-goal lead. Tony Burns carries it in, loses it, but Brian Nelson picks it up and scores to make it 3-1. Denfeld, and Denfeld would go up by two goals, making it 4-2. Then, East with a two-man advantage. Kevin Rapana with a blast from the point. This is the uh, goal that made it 4-2. But the Hunters went on to win this game tonight by a final of 7-4 to four at the deck. So Denfeld still very much alive in the Lake Superior Conference race. A big night for Denfeld on a night that Earl Rock, a Denfeld junior, will not forget. Mm, tell us about the it. The All-Star game is underway, Darren, in Edmonton. Well, tonight, down at the Deck Arena, a pair of high school hockey games, and there was plenty at stake. The Denfeld Hunters have won the Lake Superior Conference hockey title with a 6-3 win over Cloquet's Lumberjacks. Junior forward Earl Rock had quite a night. He figured in every Denfeld score, three goals and three assists. Rock started it in the first two minutes of action with Scourge assisting. Then Rock ate it on goal two for the Hunters by Christensen. Steve Anderson scored for Cloquet. It was 2-1 Denfeld after one. Rock from Christensen to open the second period. Bertoliat scored to make it 3-2, but then three straight Denfeld goals. Burns from Rock, Scourge from Rock, and Rock again for the hat trick. It was 6-2 Denfeld after two, and Cloquet's Chartier had the only third period goal. The final for Denfeld, 6-3. Earl Rock was excited afterwards. Uh, we knew what we had to do coming into the game. Our backs were against the wall, and we, we knew we had to come out with a big win, and everyone just stuck together, and we played as a team, and everyone just did the best that he could do and just play their position. Did you have any special preparations before the game here tonight? Uh, no, we just talked about it and we had a little meeting before we got dressed and we just talked about what we had to do and we came out here and we did it. Do something in the state tournament this year. They've been there before and uh, two weeks from today, as a matter of fact, they'd like nothing better than to be down at the St. Paul Civic Center in their quarterfinal match. They had a big win well, tonight. You bet. Denfeld knows what it's like to play in a state tournament and they want to experience it again, needless to say. Tonight, the Hunters gained a spot in the Section 2 quarter final round. They defeated Duluth Central 5-2 at Westman Arena. Denfeld took the early lead in the first period. Earl Rock with a good job of getting the puck out to Brett Larson, and Larson tees it up and beats Eric Witzman through traffic. Just 31 seconds later, the lead goes to 2-zip. Greg Christensen digs a loose puck out to Troy Skorich at the doorstep, and he has Witzman at his mercy. But Central didn't lay down and die. A couple of minutes later, Keith Tottenham has his shot deflected out front, and Bill Benson cherry-picks it past John Nicolizzi, low and on the far side. But it wasn't long before Denfeld regained their two-goal advantage. Tony Burns takes the feed from Christensen. He unloads a big shot that squirts past Witzman. It was 3-1 Hunters after a period, and Denfeld went on to win it tonight 5-2. So they will now face Cloquet next Tuesday night in the quarterfinal. Local high school hockey night, both in Duluth and on the Iron Range. All comes down to 60 minutes, Denny. It. It's one game, and then you go or you sit, or yep. you're done. Yeah, that's about it. The time for talk is just about all over, and it's now time for due for the high school hockey teams, lucky enough to be still alive in sectional play. Now, it's really too bad that here in Duluth tonight, two hockey teams quite capable of representing section two will be cut to one, and we're talking about Denfeld and Cloquet. Both teams had banner seasons, but unfortunately just one will play on after tonight's 7.30 North section final at the arena. Favorites? Maybe, and I do say maybe Denfeld. After all, they have tournament experience on their side, but remember, anything and everything can happen in playoffs. I think playoffs everybody made the first, uh, last time we played them a do-or-die game except for us and the kids, and uh, we came back from that game and uh, gave up two goals in our next two games and scored 12, so uh, it is a do or die situation. I think our kids have a little revenge on their mind and we're going into the game confident. They're going to have to play really hard. They're a really good team and uh, they got lots of scoring up front with Rock and at first line there. And I don't know, they're probably trying to match lines with uh, the plant line with me and Chad Kaywood. But if we play well against them, the rest will probably cover itself. It should be a tough game. It should be a close game. Uh, I know it's going to be a, should be a pretty uh, I don't know if all physical, but it should be a pretty up-tempo game. Uh, Cloquet likes to skate pretty hard, and hopefully our boys will be able to keep up with them. Not to change any of our style that we played in the previous games. I mean, it's just our, our style of hockey to go out there and forecheck hard, take the body, and 
that's what we're going to have to do if now, we're going to win. But I tell you, this marquee game that you were talking about sure lived up to its billing tonight. It was a Section 2 quarterfinal game between the Hunters and Lumberjacks, but it had a state tournament atmosphere. Over 5,900 people on hand here, and let's just roll the tape and take a look at those highlights from the first period of play between the Hunters and Lumberjacks, who split their two games earlier this season. The arena was packed, and both coaches had some final words of wisdom for their teams before the opening faceoff. And as you said, just 31 seconds into the game, Denfeld scored early. <laughs> Earl Rock there after the pile-up out front scores and it was 1-0 Denfeld at that point. A couple of minutes later, Cloquet had a chance to even the count, but John Michelizzi somehow keeps the puck out and it was still 1-0 Denfeld. Four and a half minutes into the first, Denfeld goes up by two. Rock can't convert, but Greg Christensen does and it was 2-0 Hunters at that point. Now onto the second period with Denfeld up three zip. John Michelizzi shut the door. Here he stops Jesse Pertaliot twice and the Hunters held a 3-0 lead after two periods. Uh, the, both teams traded goals in the third period of play. And the final count tonight was 4-1 Denfeld. The Hunters are now 17-7 on the season. And uh, Cloquet did outshoot the Hunters 25-23, but John Michelizzi came up with a big game in front of the nearly 6,000 fans on Denfeld hand. Denfeld and St. Cloud Apollo was a little closer than Bill Vukanich and his team would have liked. They fell behind twice in the game, but in the end, the Hunters' experience paid off. And standing by live tonight at the Duluth Arena is our own Mike Berkland. Mike, it was a hold-your-breath affair this evening. Quite an exciting game, Paul, that's for sure. And uh, as you said, the Denfeld Hunters got a little bit more than they bargained for tonight as St. Cloud Apollo came into town, and they came into town looking to advance in the Section 2 playoffs as uh, they took on the Hunters in the semifinals. Let's just roll the highlights as we take a look at highlights from the second period. This game was a game of goaltending, great goaltending on both sides of the end, uh, the ice, that is. Here, John Michelizzi makes a great glove save on the breakaway against... St. Cloud's Dave Jans, and it was still scoreless. Later, Troy Scorch waits, then sets up Earl Rock, but he's stymied by the St. Cloud's goaltender, Scott Hillman. And the Eagles finally broke the deadlock five minutes in, with five minutes left in the second as Tom Roos pokes the loose puck past Michelizzi. It was 1-0 Denfeld, but the Hunters tied the count with 46 seconds left in the second stanza. Brian Nelson hustles in, and his hustle pays off, and that tied the game at one apiece onto the third. With Apollo on top, 2-1, things were looking rough, but Denfeld came back, Brian Nelson feeds Troy Scorch, and he finds the mark through traffic, and the Hunters had the game tied up at two apiece. Later in the third, Scorch scores again. He winds up from point-blank range and beats Hillman low, and uh, that was the game-winning goal, folks, as Denfeld came back from a 2-1 deficit and ended up winning this game tonight in the Section 2 semifinals by a final score of 3-2. to two. Troy Scorch with two goals. He joins us now, the, the hero of the game. But Troy, uh, for a while there, things were really frustrating. St. Cloud, I'm sure, surprised you guys. Oh, they surprised us a lot. You know, they're a good skating team. And I don't know, they came out, uh, we weren't really expecting, you know, a lot from them. But, you know, they've improved since we played them early in the year. And it was a good game. You didn't score till there was 46 seconds left in the second period. Were you getting worried at all? Was the team, was the team getting worried? No, we just kept, you know, saying, you know, stick to the system and keep playing hard. You know, we can't get down, and, you know, that would be our worst enemy if we get down. So You yourself were a little bit snake-bitten there in the, in the first period, and uh, there we showed us a highlight there in the second period where you hit Earl Rock, and, uh, and he got stonewalled. And at times there tonight, uh, you guys were getting frustrated. Oh, yeah, but... I don't know, we just, you know, we kept talking to one another and, you know, we got our confidence back up and we got some goals. All righty, Troy Scorich scored two goals tonight and the Denfeld Hunters will advance to the Section 2 Finals on Saturday at the St. Paul Coliseum. Paul, will send it back to you to find out who won the other Section 2 semifinal game tonight. All righty, thanks, Mike. And in that other Section 2 semifinal game played tonight at the St. Paul Coliseum, Roseville versus Anoka, as you said, Mike, let's go to the scoreboard. First, you see... The Hunters knocking off St. Cloud Apollo by a score of 3-2. to two. In that other Section 2 semifinal game, it was Anoka 3. I don't know where we're getting this information tonight, but it was Anoka 3, Roseville 2 in overtime. That was the final. Same score as the Denfeld game, and so Denfeld, Denfeld will meet Anoka. The Hunters have done it again. This afternoon at the St. Paul Coliseum, the Hunters successfully defended their Section 2 championship, earning a return trip to the state hockey tournament by knocking off Anoka. 4-1. to one. We'll pick up the action in the third period. Score tied one all, but the Hunters take the lead. Earl Rock knocks in the centering pass. Denfeld rejoicing with a 2-1 to one lead. Late in the game, Anoka had to pull their goalie in order to catch up, but the ploy didn't work. Here, Greg Christensen scoring from long range into the empty cage, giving the Hunters a 3-1 to one advantage. Denfeld clinched things with five seconds remaining. Troy Scorich feeds over to Christensen. He skates in and scores another empty net tally. 
Duluth Denfeld wins the Section 2 championship with a hard-fought 4-1 win over a pesky Anoka squad. The Hunters will face Section 3 titleist White Bear Lake next Thursday at 2.15 in St. Paul. In the For the Denfeld Hunters hockey team, all the hours of practice and three playoff games in five days with key players suffering from the flu must seem a small price to pay for the reward of a return trip to the state hockey tournament. And today at the Denfeld gym, the players were given a rousing send-off, a pep rally to send their spirits soaring as they head south for a Thursday afternoon game with White Bear Lake. As well as the hockey team, the girls basketball team, and the boys basketball team were also part of the pep rally festivities this afternoon. The players will have a chance to practice the hockey players at the St. Paul Civic Center tomorrow. Mike Berklin has more on the Hunters tournament preparations. Bill Vukanich has coached hockey at Denfeld for five years. This week his Hunters will end their season just like last year in St. Paul at the state tournament. But this year the Hunters want more than the consolation championship. Any experience that you ever have doesn't hurt. Uh... Uh, we were just talking before practice started, you know, we uh, we started a mission at, mission at the beginning of the year. Uh, mission, is, mission is not complete yet until uh, we come home with that uh, championship trophy. That's what the boys have strived for all year. Last week, the Hunters played three games in five days during the sectional playoffs and got pretty tired. This week, they could possibly play three games in three days. They don't mind the challenge if they're playing in front of a packed house at the St. Paul Civic Center. Yeah, it's a lot easier to play in front of a big packed house like that, and the crowd gets into it, and then you play off the crowd where they come Saturday afternoon, here a game where you got a thousand people, it's hard to get up for it, where you'll be able to get up and the adrenaline will be fun, you'll be able to play pretty good. Ten Denfeld players will return to the tourney this year, but it'll be the first chance for leading scorer Troy Scorich to show his stuff at the Civic Center. Last year he missed all three tournament games because of mono. He plans to make the most of the trip this time around. Oh, I feel more going down there again. I mean, I don't know. It, it just seemed like it was too good to be true, you know, to happen another year in a row. But I don't know. We stuck together and we played a good game and we knew what it took to win. He even made a comment uh, after our game on Saturday after he was uh, done. He said, I think I'm going to go and uh, live in that, that uh, bacteria-free bubble or whatever he called it for the, for the remaining of the week so I don't get sick. Uh, uh, he has a good sense of humor and... I'm just, I'm just so happy for Troy that he did get his, uh, like Kevin Peets had said in the paper, a second chance, and he made good with it. And the rest of the hunters are hoping to make good with their second chance as well. Mike Berkland, TV6 Sports.